Hi, Amber. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm really excited to do this. Uh, my my Pilates teacher and friend, Alicia, introduced made the introduction. I've been eating at your restaurant, The Source, forever and a day. It's like mm -hmm. one of my favorite places to go. And your green um, bone broth is like to die for. Yes, thank you. So, <laughs> so tell everybody a little bit about yourself um, and a little bit of your background on you, and then we're going to dig into the to your now. Okay, great. Yeah, so I have been in the restaurant business my whole entire life. Never been in another industry um, since I was 15, and I'm 40, I'm 46. So I only know the restaurant business. I started cooking at a very young age with my grandmother in the kitchen, went to like an early baby culinary school when I was like eight or nine with my oh dad. Oh my gosh. It was like a week school, right? But I always was the one in the kitchen cooking. I always knew this is what I wanted to do. And I got my bachelor's in hotel restaurant management from Auburn University and then slowly migrated to Colorado to apprentice in the kitchen because I wanted to get out of the front of the house and into the back of the house. I knew I needed to have my hands in the food with all the guys. And so I I found an Italian chef and he paid me $5 an hour and oh. I worked 80 hours a week and I was the only woman in the kitchen. I was still to this day, the only woman, the restaurant's not open anymore, but I'm still the only woman in that kitchen. And it was crazy. I cried every day and I almost quit every single day. It was, you know, I had to act like one of the men. I mean, it was, it was pretty awful. My mom would say, I can't believe you're doing this. You're crazy. Why do you want to work back there? I'd have to work like wear double sports bras because my breasts were burning, working the grill for 10 hours a day. It was like insane, but I held with it and I persevered because I wanted so much with my chef, what my chefs had. And so then he asked me to move to California, to LA 23 years ago to open up a restaurant called Mediterranea, which was on the pier of Hermosa and it's not open anymore. And I was the executive chef there for 10 years. And I really put in 80 to 90 hours a week, those first like six years and was just living in a very masculine dominated um, energy. And it was, it was insane. I had no balance in life, but I was creating and kicking butt. I was doing what I loved. And um, yeah, it was amazing. It's a Southern Italian and Northern Spanish food. And it was, it brought me so much joy, but at the same time I was drinking too much caffeine, binging on sugar. And so part of my story too, is since a very early age of 10, because this leads to how I opened up my business now is God granted me with this passion for, and the love for food and this amazing gift to create food and heal people's body. But at the same time, I created an unhealthy relationship with food. So I had this eating disorder, disordered eating pattern for 30 years. That was secret that nobody knew about. I came out about it about eight years ago. Mm. And um, so I was battling with that. So when I was at Mediterranean towards the end of my career, I basically started to feel I was going through adrenal burnout. I had fatigue. I had was having memory loss. I had torn both of my hip labrums and both hips from overworking and over exercising. I was people called me an exercise bulimic. I would I would work 50, 60 hours a week and I'd still find time to work out four hours. I was a day. just you know literally I mean? gonna ask you that. You know what I mean? Like it was like, how did I even do it? And so, anyways, I, I came to a crash with too much alcohol, caffeine, drugs, and partying and sugar and binging and like destroying my body. And so I had a wake-up call. It was like I need to start to heal my body with food. I can't live like this anymore. And so I went away to a spiritual retreat and I got cracked open. And it's a very long story of how, but that's what prompted me that basically I found the willingness and the desire and the passion again to want to create and heal my body with food. And it basically, um, I had to come to a point of feeling so desperate that I wanted to change and feel better. And that is how the Source Cafe opened 10 years ago that I have right now in Hermosa Beach that you were talking about. So my journey towards opening the source was my desire to feel better, better in my body, take my power back from food, heal my body with food. But I also knew there was a deep, deep need in <laughs> the community to um, heal also with the healing properties of food. I mean, <clears throat> I want to ask you about working in the men's world of chef, yeah. but I, one thing I will say is that almost everyone I know in retail has worked in a restaurant, including myself. And it's, you know, when you talk about adrenal burnout, <laughs> excuse me, I, I, I was waiting tables. I can't even imagine being behind the, yeah. behind the, the, whatever the wall yeah. of, of plates that I used to have to get my plate from. But I, I mean, 
you're running on adrenaline 24 seven. And, and we had obviously short shifts. You guys did not. I mean, that those kind of hours, like the burnout oh, is, I mean, I, I, lost, I lost my menstrual cycle. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, oh my you know, God. You know, both of my hips were out. I'd have one of my masseuse ladies come in the back door of Mediterranean. She would like help me with my back in the middle of like a 15 hour shift. I like some nights I'd go home and I'm like, I think I peed once today and I was dehydrated. I would just sweat, would just run down my back, like all day long, standing in front of like a hundred degree stoves. Like I, I, okay. So you had said before, it's a very male dominated, very male dominated entry. Now it's better. Now, 2023, there's a lot of women. It's, it's much different. I attract a lot of women, young chefs and workers for my business now. But when I was going through it, it was def. it's, I mean, yeah, it was a good old boys club. And I had, and as a young chef in my twenties, I looked like I was like 19, right? Like nobody oh wanted to listen to me and take me seriously. So with oh. that, I had to wear a very like off with your head, very like militant personality, which is not my free flowing, you know, personality. I cut all my femininity out. Like I would make sure that I did not look sexy and nobody could see my boobs. And I didn't want my male employees staring at me and the male customers, you know, they would come and be like, oh, this is the, they would say this to my servers this is the most amazing, whatever meatballs or whatever the, the pasta was. This is like my grandma used to make in Italy. Please tell the chef, please tell him. They would just assume that we love it. And my girl servers would be like, we will tell her. Ah. And, and they would just kind of, and when they would ask, oh, can we speak to the chef? The food was amazing. I would walk out Michelle and like my chef coat and literally the faces of these men would be like, you're cooking this food. Like, you know, like, it's like, weird. It's like, it's like, See, like women are are givers. W women yeah. are are nurturers. It seems yeah. like, and you know, until you just said that, it's like, why would you be shocked that there's a female walking out of the rest like that? To me, is like yeah. women are nurturers, and we feed, yeah, and, we love. It's, uh... and it, it's and it's like now, I, I now that you're saying that, it's like you're right. Like you never see women. I mean, now you do, but you, when yeah. I'm thinking back, like you, I just I don't. I mean, oh. none of the restaurants I worked in ever had female. Oh. Not a 25, I would just be blonde, not a 25 year old blonde girl walking out like with a big smile on her face. They're like, are you playing dress up? Like literally people would like question. And like, it was something that I battled. So I had to be like super stern and very like um, stoic and uh, yeah, like no feelings and shut off my feelings and shut off my femininity. And plus it was like, I had all male vendors, mostly male employees that were older than me. And there was a cultural language barrier. And so like half my employees would be talking behind my back. I mean, I'd fire people left and right. So they knew that I was in charge. I really, yeah. had to, like, here I am. I mean, my ego led that career and I was like, definitely nasty. Like, unfortunately in the restaurant business, it's the toxic culture, especially in the kitchen. It's pretty nasty how people talk to each other and how chefs talk to everyone that's underneath. And we're all treated. I mean, we're like abused. I mean, it's pretty abusive. And so I was taught that and so then I, the first couple of years at Metatronio, I definitely spoke to my employees like that to get attention. So people took me seriously. Yeah. And really towards the end of the career, I started soften and realize I need balance in my life. I'm going to take back my power. I want to step into my divine feminine power, which I had shut off my whole entire life. I didn't even know what that was. Right. And then I started to do like deep inner work. Like I had like a lot of work to do because I was such this like structured doer, masculine. I had forgotten about my vulnerability, my softness, yeah. and letting people see my emotion. And now I lead in a much different way, like, like much different way. I have to ask you, cause I've never understood this. Like I've worked in a couple of places. They bring in a chef and they bring in their team and they cook for shows. And um, the yes chef thing, I do not fucking get. Like I, I, yeah. I was like, okay, you know her, you've worked for her this person for eight years why are why is it so formal please explain it, that. <laughs> so it's interesting it's a respect it's a respect thing for sure it's a respect for the chef that has gone through tons of training has trained under some of the best chefs in the world a lot of chefs when we go through training we don't even get paid like you go through it and i think uh, for the yes chef it's at first it used to trigger me because it was like, I've known you forever, but it's a sign of like deep, deep respect. And in the industry, when people know it, like it feels, I used to actually not really care if people called me chef. And now we switched when I opened up another restaurant and with source. And now I call my other two 
they they're cook, they're my chefs and so I'm like I'll walk in and like hey chef how are you and like hey chef and I just it, so for me I, li I like it now everyone's not called chef but the people that are have earned that title and there's like deep respect behind it so it's it's yeah so you were in the restaurant industry like in the 80s and 90s not the 80s I started in um 2000 okay yeah. Have you read, and this is total sideline, have yeah. you read Michael's, I can't forget, remember his last name, um, Your Table is Ready? No, I can't believe I haven't read that. Oh no. my God, it just came out. He okay. he was the head maitre, maitre d' like in some of the best restaurants in New York yeah. during like the 80s and right around the timeline that um, Studio 54 closed. So that party lifestyle kind of bled into their restaurants and like the partying, the sex, the yeah. drinking, the alcohol, like everything you're talking about is like the nonstop working, the adrenals and, 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 and the, the part that I think was like, not shocking because I've seen it happen was, um, when the food, uh, and beverage inspectors came in. Yes. He's like, yeah you, you could never pass because even just your cooler yeah the health department isn't... it's gnarly yeah you have to read the book it's I'm in okay. the middle of it right now it's phenomenal okay. so awesome. you, now you're okay so I know from my own time from retail and whatnot and and, and burnt what burnout is seriously real and then the, uh, you know you're never eating right and I think yeah. a, re a lot of the reason why I wanted to talk to you because I think a lot of retailers a lot of women retailers mm -hmm. because all of us are working all day long and I fell into this myself like I wouldn't eat all day I'd be working stand like literally like for some, I've never been able to sit and have a meal, like calmly sit down because I've always been in the middle of a job. So I'm standing there with my plate, inhaling my food and it trickled down into my life, my personal life. Like after hours, like I went on my first date with my husband and the waiter put our food down. I'm not kidding you, Amber. I was done in like five minutes. It, yeah. Dave was sitting there looking at me. He's like, wow, do you want to? talk or anything in between or like, either talk <laughs> oh my god and I realized just standing there and, and just being on work and being on that adrenaline overload all day you don't eat all day you're standing up and then I would be starving and I'd be inhaling some snack while I'm making dinner and then I'd eat a giant plate of dinner and then I'd go to bed and it yeah. like I just been I just wrapped up I just lost 25 pounds and it's like I look at the post I post a picture of my before and it's cringeworthy but it's like I realize now like what I learned just from my own little thing is I had to relearn how to eat and how to put my fork down and check in like am I full am I satiated like what I'm putting in my body and like how like treating it, I've realized now it's self-care and that's I think the reason why I wanted to talk to you so bad and hearing your story of like hitting bottom and relearning self-care in the way of food and whatnot and how now that's what you do for people in your restaurant yeah. is feed them and how important it is so tell me a little bit about the retreat that you went on and and the um basically having to break you down to build you okay. back up <laughs> yeah well I love that you just and I'm sure we'll circle back to this because this is a very passionate talk, topic of mine where I do I teach I coach women on this it's not women will come I want to lose weight and then I'll go to the retreat but I just wanted to piggyback on what you're saying it's like it's not what we're eating all the time it's how you're eating it's uh -huh. huge so we can talk about that a little bit later because it's like it's the bit it's a game changer and that's how I've started to heal my health but that's amazing that you've clicked because a lot of people don't realize that so it's amazing that that you, well you it, it, it I, I, and that clarity. I can't lie like I I did do that shot that it's because I'm a 50 oh, okay. I'm 57 so it's okay. Like 20 pounds I dropped after COVID. Yeah. And the other 25 just sat there and like, yeah. but I still didn't learn those lessons. And it was only until this, as I realized like how fast I was eating and how, like, I was never putting my fork. I mean, obviously, I never did with Dave in our first date, yeah. but never putting my fork down and never actually sitting in, in a feeling like, all right, I'm full. And I yeah. don't, now I don't like cookies aren't about, I don't eat a an entire cookie. Like I'll have two bites. Cause it's like, okay, I'm satiated. This is so good. I'm so glad. So that yeah. 
that these foods are bad for you. I mean, I, I don't eat fried stuff like that, but it's still, I, my whole mentality now has changed on, but I, I would love to say I did it all on my own, but it, it has been yeah. through help of that, but it, it's, it has been a fucked up journey. Like you realize like how fucked up your head is around food. It's like, and I know a million women go through this. Yeah, no, it's, it's like part of my mission now. And I had to, well, obviously rock bottoms, right. We have to be broken down to like find the light to build ourselves up and, yeah. and then we can help and inspire right from, from that place. And so when I found that spiritual retreat, it actually was a fasting retreat in the desert called we care. And I went there um, 12 years ago before I knew that I needed to leave Mediterranean, right. Make that career leap. Like that I heard was, it's amazing there. It's amazing. And I, I've been there a couple of times and I actually went because I knew I was going to be able to quote unquote, starve myself because it was fasting and I was going to have yeah. colonics. So yeah. I was like, cool. But I was telling everybody I'm going to go, you know, cleanse. And so what I didn't know is that I got cracked open and had my, if you want to say spiritual awakening and got kicked down and got ripped open. And I remember a speaker there was like, list all the na- ways you love yourself. And I could only list three things. And I just remember crying and purging and emotions for the, one of the first times. And I kept on having like visions and I started meditating and doing breath work and I started hearing like, and seeing turmeric because back then turmeric wasn't hot. Turmeric's hot now. Right. But I started like crafting this turmeric tonic in my head and started to hear, you can heal yourself with food. You can take, take your power back from food. And so from there, I came back from the desert. I was fired up. I dove deep into like superfoods and chlorella and turmeric and wanted to heal. Cause I'd ended up having a hip surgery, a hip scope on the one hip. And then it was like, no, I'm not having another surgery. I want to heal myself with food. So I started putting on putting people on cleanses, um, at Mediterraneo and doing that on the side, taking people to grocery stores, doing substitutions for food. And then I, um, created the turmeric tonic, which is now one of the most popular drinks at the source with apple cider vinegar and cinnamon with cinnamon and lemon and ginger and black pepper and honey. And I was slinging these gallons out of the back of Mediterraneo. And I started to realize, you know, I've lost my passion for this type of food. I want to heal people with food. I just started praying and really got into visualization and breath work really started helping me like manifest what I wanted. And I would go to Bikram Yoga, which is across from what used to be called Planet Earth, which is now yeah. my restaurant. And um, the previous owner was my neighbor. Okay. And she and I had opposite schedules because we both, both work so much and talk about starting to believe and trusting the mystery of life and trusting and flow and learning about surrender and faith and stepping into all that, knowing that we're not in control. Right. I finally started to grasp those concepts concepts. Because I had to find a spiritual practice in faith to to find acceptance with my body when it was that I couldn't. When I coach women now, it's really hard to because people women come to me and are like, oh, I want to lose this, and it's like, well, it's not about the food; it's a symptom of something deeper. And mm-hmm. I feel like whether it's God or whatever your word is, I had to find some sort of faith because I don't believe we can do this alone. So, anyways, this is. So she walked out of her door one day, I happened to be napping and I walked outside and the words just came out. Hey, do you want to sell your business planet earth? And she said, yes. I'm like, I called my mom and my mom was like, you asked and, and God answered universe answered. And 40 something days later, the source was open. Right. I, wow. I, I, I just got the chills. I, but it came, it was like a deep soul calling. Like I could feel it in my bones. I knew this was going to be the way that I was going to heal my body. I was going to start to heal this relationship with food, start to love and accept myself. But through that, I knew I was going to be able to help other people. And I'm not saying just women, because I've helped tons of men, but people are like, you shouldn't quit your job. You have a great job. You're crazy. If you're going to open up your own restaurant, you're going to, you could fail. It's risky. People don't want all that healthy food. And I was like, you know what? I felt it like deep in my soul and my bones. Like it was definitely like divinely guided and yeah, I took the leap and I did it and it's been 10 and a half years. So yeah. I can't wait. It's been 10 and a half years. That's crazy. I mean, I, I've been going there. I don't even know for how long. Cause I, ever since they opened up the IVP at my, everyone oh, yeah. that follows me on MC design knows like we do my, my, my main hustle. I've learned, I'm not supposed to say this is my side hustle. Like you're, okay. you make yourself small by saying that. Okay. Uh, I, my, my first job, my first is, is MC design collaboration, which I'm a merchandiser and a designer. And, and two times a year, it gets nuts for me. And Christmas is just like, like I, I'm surviving on like two and three hours of sleep. Cause we do Bristol farms holiday decor. So we go in oh. at like one and three in the morning and oh. we're on scaffolding. And, and then I go from there to 
my other retailer. So, you know, most of my team will go home, including my husband, they'll go to sleep for a couple hours and they'll go off and do, I just keep going. And it's like, I'm 57 and you're get. I'm tired, but like, I realized that what has literally kept me going and, and healthy and being able to keep up at that pace is that between your food and the IVs next door. Cause I'd go, I'd go get something to eat, like a snack and while I'm getting my IV and then I'd leave there and then I'd go and get a green bone broth that I swear by. And I swear those two things are what kept me healthy. Like at the, like during where my immune system's got to be like out yeah. the door at that point with for like sure. four hours of sleep. Yeah, for sure. So it's amazing that you were able to like find some things to fuel your body and, and support your body going through that. And I think what you were saying earlier, like running and having those hours and not eating all day and your blood sugar is dropping mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're starving at night and people don't realize. And, and what I love talking about, it's like really retraining yourself on how to eat and not necessarily what to eat. Yes, it matters what we eat. Like I'm really passionate about inspiring people and what we put in our body matters right now today. We either pay now or we pay later. And I could go on and on about the importance of organic and fresh, fresh food and watch out for your vegetable oils. But really it's about planning. And I think even with somebody that's working 50, 60 hours a week and night shifts and whatever, it's really those moments of like, okay, I need, or, and, and taking snacks. I've got hard boiled eggs in my purse. I know I've got these oat blueberry balls. There's a recipe on my site, you know, it takes eight minutes to make, you can have them for the week. And so you're keeping yourself fueled with healthy fats and protein all day. You're not over, you're not grabbing the candy or whatever that is, the sugar or the caffeine all day for a quick fix. And then when you're eating, it's like really like, can you sit my rule right now with myself, which is still really hard. And it doesn't happen all the time. Cause it's hard at the restaurant. I mean, chefs, and it sounds like for you guys too, like we don't, I don't think I sat down for 25 years. And when I'm at home, like you said, like you got home and like, it goes into your personal life. I'll, I live by myself. I'm single, right? I notice now I'm better, but I would get home and I would like make this beautiful plate of food and I'm standing in my kitchen and I'm just, I was like, Amber, yeah. you're allowed to go yeah. actually sit down at the table with a fork. You're basically almost shoveling this food in with your hand. You're eating as fast as you can. You're allowed to sit down and actually eat and swallow your food. You're not at work, but that like, or, you know, I'm eating out of the fridge. I'm like eating like, squash and broccoli and a piece of chicken breast and it's like you can sit down you can sit down like, it, it, it's, it's, it's crazy yeah. one thing i want to ask you because like you talk you have like is it your instagram that has the food um the different recipes yes. that you have like the the balls and so yeah. um, because one thing i have realized a lot of people do is that when they live by themselves and they work a ton yeah. is that they come home and their dinner isn't like this beautiful meal that you prepared yourself. It's like you just said, a piece of chicken that's out of my fridge and some squash yeah. and some, but like, talk to me about like what self-love looks like as far as like a meal for yourself when you do, when you do cook for yourself and when you right. do allow yourself to sit down. Yeah. No, I love this. I feel like meal prep is not, so me, everyone's always like, chef, you, you've got so much food at your fingertips with your restaurants. Right. And and I do, but it's different. It's like I, so meal prep is one of the biggest forms of self-love and self-care and it takes time and commitment and willingness and energy. I get it. And, but you, you gotta, you gotta make time because it's your health. And so for me, I plan a day to go to the store. I have my prep list. I have my grocery list. I mean, get organized. Don't just like willy nilly and be like, what am I going to eat this week? Like get your list together. For me, I keep it really simple. So self-love to me is when I open up my, and care when, is when I open up my fridge and I've got a bowl of hard boiled eggs. I've got some steamed veggies. I've got some cooked rice already. I've got some sauteed bison and veggies. I've got maybe some roasted salmon, whatever, some fresh greens you get it. I've got some, and so then for me, I pick like five things, right? It's really not that elaborate. And then I can make a bowl of a beautiful thing. I can maybe heat up the salmon, saute it, heat it up. It takes five minutes to prepare. And then I can sit down. That for me feels good. I also have like a lot of like one pot meals. I have one in my cookbook and I have some on my website and cooking show, Halicious. And I love a one pot meal because for me that I live alone, oh, wow. I, make a, I make a one pot meal and I, I'll eat it three nights in a row because it's me. It's not like I need to impress a date or a, like please a husband. Like it's me. If I have to eat roasted salmon, for three nights in a row, I know I'm nursing my body and it feels good. And I took the time to prepare it. <laughs> You're gonna you know laugh. what I mean? It's like, it's fine. It's like, I don't, 
for me, I keep my food really simple. I make sure I have like some dates in the freezer for my dessert. If I get a sweet tooth, I make sure I've got my bone broth I prepare. It's a non-negotiable every week for my gut health and my skin. And yeah. Your skin is like, um, if you're not watching this on YouTube, <laughs> you on you. YouTube your skin is amazing. <laughs> what, you. how, okay. Cause yes, meal planning. And it's like, for me, I have, when I'm high season, I have maybe a day off and it's like, all I want to do is like sleep on Sundays. And it's like Sundays, one day it's like, okay, here's your meal planning day. And it's like the idea of spending the day Oh, in my, exactly. I would also, I have to, I have to like tell you, I have a galley style, tiny kitchen where I can wash a dish and literally turn around and, and stir whatever's on the oven. And like, yeah. like it's literally all within, but the idea of that, but I also know that to be prepped like that and to be able to have all that, it's like, cause I, I realized that this week, just taking little meals with me to my, you know, my road jobs I was doing, it was like, Oh, I have snap peas and something in my car. I can just eat that. And like, I, I was like, wow, this there, it's really right. Like meal planning is. Meal planning, it's, and I like when I'm really, really busy and I, people think it's like so weird. I will show up at my own restaurant with my own food because I have, for me, I have too many options. And so then for me, I'm walking over, this used to be part of my eating disorder. All of a sudden I've got this in my mouth and that in my mouth. I either one, two things happen. I either over ate all day or I didn't eat it all, right? So I take my meals. I know the night before I'm having this for breakfast, this for lunch, and this for dinner, and it's easy. Now, if you have one day off like that, you could get some nuts, some pre-hard boiled eggs, some fresh fruits, some snap peas, you know, depending what grocery store or market, you can get like pre-roasted clean fish and salmon, depending what your budget is, and at least just have, for me, it's like protein and high and, and quality fat, right? Even you could like grab an avocado, you could eat a half of avocado, it's a great brain food, handful of fresh berries, and I don't know, a hard boiled egg, like that's a meal, and you didn't have to cook anything. So it's just kind of getting like creative, and if you can't prepare, if you get home at night, and you know that you do want to like make something, roasted salmon takes like less than 10 minutes. I have a fast dish. So, you know, there's things that, you know, that you have, have the ingredients and you don't, it's not super fancy. It's, it's very, very, very like low key. And you know, it's going to take you 15 minutes to, to prepare this meal. Yeah. I, um, I didn't know you coached. That's, is that even on your bio? It's no, not. so we'll, so it's something new. So I'll tell you what's going on right now. So basically what happened was- I'm like looking at your bio, like what? I don't I think I put it on there at the end, at the very end when I sent it to you. So at the, so what I'm in school um, for the Institute for the Psychology for Eating to be a mind-body eating coach. And one of my, it's really, it's something that it just felt, I felt like an alignment because I already can tell people what to eat. I love doing yeah. private cooking classes, um, cooking classes. I love coaching teens on- I have a 15 year old teen I'm coaching right now. I love coaching teens on what to eat and bringing substitutions into their diet because the diet is, is so crazy at that age, but also helping talk about loving and accepting your body now. So for me, nobody was there for me when I was a teen and it started, I mean, my, I grew up in a loving household, but there was not a lot of conversations about beautiful, different body types. And so I had, I started hating my body at age 10. So to, be able to reach out to tweens and teens, and then also mostly I coach just women right now. Um, but for me, it's, I'm so passionate about it because I struggled for 30 years, hating my body and hating food. And to be able to help coach someone on how to love and accept their body, feel good in their body, take control of their health is like, brings me so much joy. And so with the mind body eating, eating coach certificate, with my chefing, it just really is amazing. And honestly, oh when people come to, and also it's, this is like kind of random, but it's something I'm fusing into because I have space, more space is I started working about three and a half years ago with a coach that specializes in removing trauma and stress and tension, accumulated stress over our whole lifetime from our body. And it's based, it's called true body intelligence. And what it does is it helps um, really build um, intelligence and really helps build inner self-esteem and confidence and step into your true power. But really we can't find a place of wholeness and peace and freedom when we're holding on to trapped and suppressed emotions. We can talk therapy all day and I love talk therapy. I have a therapist, I have a mentor, but really to heal generational and lineage trauma, it's all in our body and it's based on Chinese medicine. I could go on for forever. Anyways. Oh my God, I need this he, information. <laughs> he, so he changed my life and because he changed my life and my body changed and really helped with like even 
more getting rid of my addictions because I have a long line of addiction and um, addiction over here on one side and sexual trauma over here. I got trained in it. I took the, I, I spent a year and a half training and just finished all my testing. So I do body work. It's random, but it's, I'm trying to fuse that in. I'm not talking about it a lot because people think of me as a chef, but right now I am a chef, but I'm also doing coaching of helping people really step into their full authentic self and removing pain and stress and tension from the body. And it's really sad. I have a couple of women I'm working on right now and just to see the difference in their lives and how they communicate better and how they show up for themselves and how people respond to them. It's amazing. And, you know, everything in our life, what shows up in our life shows up in our body. Like our body doesn't lie. And really this work has helped really trust my wisdom and rem remember we all have all the answers inside of us. We just, we just forget. You know? I think, I think, yeah. I mean, uh, one, I think it's a perfect marriage. I mean, that's like the perfect yeah. segue into what you're doing is healing yeah. people through food. And yeah. now you're doing it with your hands. And, you know, yeah. it's, it's like, it it's seems amazing. like exactly where you're supposed to be. Yeah. I, but I think a lot of women have a major issue with, with self-esteem and exactly. loving themselves. And it's like, yeah. I mean, I've talked about it before. It's like, obviously Instagram has not, and all the influencers and the perfect bodies and like we're yeah. adults. And if we're carrying around this, like this, yeah. like unlove for yourself, because you're comparing yourself to everybody. Can you imagine being a teenager and like trying um, to like, it, it, it's so, I don't know how they're going through it. I don't, I mean the 15 year old, I said, what's hard to, let's talk about it. What's hard. And she goes, yeah, TikTok. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it you know seems I mean? like the dumbest thing, but it's like, really, if you really deep dive into a lot of what the kids are watching, even like the people I follow and the people like they're, I mean, just on the life level, it's like this perfect life and this perfect family and perfect apparel and this fabulous body. And, but it's like, you know, you, then you go home and you look at your own life and it's like, but it, that, I mean, how do you <laughs> not fall into that? And I think that that's the comparison is the quickest way to insanity and it's the fastest way to rob joy, right? Those are yeah. the things. And when I, I spoke to about 20, 15 year olds last Sunday about all this, we're talking about you, like loving your body. And they were like, social media. Some of the moms were like, you're not going to have a phone. You're not on social media. And I was like, I don't know how I would have gotten through high school with the phone and all that and oh. all the filters and like comparing because the body, that, that body dysmorphia and not loving and accepting your body. It's starting at a really young age where girls right now are, I mean, I've, I have friends that their daughter's friends have had lipo already. They're in high school. What? Boob yes. There's boob jobs. I mean, we um, are in the South Bay. So we are, I, you, know you know what I mean? And so it's interesting. And these are high schoolers. And so it just, um, yeah, I want to be there, but it starts with, uh, it starts with the parents. Cause we passed down so much generational and stuff that we don't even realize. And you know, all of our parents did the best they could, you know, I got to do some major healing with my mother through this work and it's just been amazing. Um, yeah. So I think everybody's mother yeah. in their own way has had a hand in on, I mean, I know yeah. my mom grew up in the diet era of like, yeah. you know, cottage cheese, cantaloupe and, um, what oh. else did she eat? I just, like fab and, now, and, and I mean, now cottage cheese is having this major comeback and I'm so excited because yeah. I love it, yeah. but it's, it also, I, I mean, I know for mine, it started with that. And then, you know, I mean, I have to tell you the story because you talked about eating too much at the restaurants and whatnot. And I, I just told, I've never told the story and I have been talked to somebody, uh, you know, uh, th that I was working with that I worked at a restaurant called the, Hunt the Huntley hotel and they, okay. It was in Santa Monica and they had the top floor was a Mexican restaurant and it was amazing. And it, I think I was like, I think I was just 21 and I was, I had modeled, my dad had passed away. Someone gave me four quarts of ice cream instead of flowers. And I literally ate the ice cream instead. And I, I went back to my restaurant job and I was starting to expand. And I, now I had this sweet tooth and this insatiable I needed sugar. And I, I still remember, and I can't even believe I'm talking about this publicly, but I remember going to the restaurant and waiting tables and like somebody be like, where's Michelle? Where's Michelle? And all the cooks are all, she's in the walk-in freezer. And I would literally be in the walk-in freezer inhaling flan. I mean, flan's the best thing on earth. I'm not going to lie. I'm Mexican. I do love it. But I mean, that's like how, like where I ended up with like that restaurant 
in like working and like inhaling and inhaling chips and salsa as you're like working. But I mean, I, I don't, <laughs> the world of restaurant and the world of like food dysmorphia is like not good. It's, 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 it's wild. It's like an epidemic for sure. So to help, yeah, to help people step into their power and really love their body right now, it's like a big, big thing. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about what the restaurant, your restaurant looks in difference to where you came out of at Mediterranean. How have you changed your own oh my gosh. restaurants? Yeah. So I have had the source for 10 years and the first probably two years, I still was working in my masculine energy in terms of working 60 to 80 hours a week. I mean, just the doing, 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 doing. And then finally I started to realize I can't do this anymore. And so stepping into my femininity and taking back my feminine power was looks like now is having like authentic, real conversations when a problem arises and we all speak to each other the way we want to be spoken to. Nobody is above the other person. Just because I'm the quote unquote owner, I'm still going to sweep the floor and wash dishes. This mm. is why I've had employees that have worked for me for 10 to 20 years. I literally have guys, we we did the math the other day. We've been together 20 years. I mean, it's a long time. Oh, and they, they help me, I help them. And nobody, like I said, nobody is above the other person. And also I let my team see me cry. I'm very vulnerable. When I had a hard time, um, with a family member a couple of years ago, I walked in and he's like, guys, I'm at like a 10. I'm super triggered. I'm really sad today, but I just want to let you know that like, this is where I'm at with, with what's going on. And I have to tell you, like when they, when they see me cry, they work really hard. <laughs> like, oh, I love they're that. Allowed, you know what I mean? They're allowed to come to me with stuff. I mean, we've been through dirt, uh, death and births and all kinds of things. And it just feels, um, really bringing in softness and um being like very open and transparent and authentic and allowing them to see my vulnerability was the was the biggest thing because then it allowed allows them to feel and it allows them to come and be like chef I'm really feeling this I don't really think that that was fair and I'm really triggered and like before like if I, I could have never spoken like that to my chef yeah he'd been like uh cool like that doesn't <laughs> matter you're either fired or go back to your station like you dumb bitch, like literally. Well, like, you've, girl, given like, them, away. <laughs> you've given them the safe space to be able yeah. to talk about stuff that, yeah. you know, is bothering. But I love that it, you, you said vulnerability and feminine energy. And I love yeah. both of those things. I think that a lot of, yeah. a, lo a lot of people don't work yeah. like that. And, and No. And it's nice because my business partner, Cindy, I mean, it's, 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 yeah, I mean, it's all like all women and my CFO is a woman, just like all women. And so it was just really nice. And I feel like we, so we started a while ago doing gratitude circle every day. People hated it, but then they started loving it and it started, it was a way to connect. And I really want to bring it back. It was I like, love I, that. what, what does it look I, like? So basically what it was, it would be seven o'clock in the morning. It's before we opened and we'd all get together the front and the back, even if there was four or five of us and everyone would go around and they would say something we're grateful for. And son of my some of my older Latino men were like embarrassed. They'd never been offered that before. So they would pass. So finally they started to do it. And it was amazing to see them like open and be like, oh, well, I'm grateful for my mom. To I was like, he's passed for like a month. And I was like, uh... complaining about having to be like to say, say you're grateful for the sun, for your shoes, that you can pay your rent. Like it can be clean water. It doesn't have to be something like, and then people started opening up. And like, then it was a way for the employees to connect and be like, wow, I didn't know that your mom was in the hospital and you're grateful she's okay. You know, it was a way for us to start to, so it just built like that loving space between my employees. And um, we don't do that anymore, but we do it at big team meetings. And it's really, we do team building. I feng shui. I'm actually feng shuiing the restaurant later tonight. Yeah. I, I, I'll go in there and sage once a month. I do a lot of spirituality. Like they know me, I've got my crystals all over. So I'm just like very open and free and always talking about don't have your cell phone in your pocket. It can cause cancer. There's oh, that's right. I forgot you're friends with Heather too. So no. yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so she's coming over later and going to do my house. And, and oh, we, I'm so excited. Yeah. So it's fun. We're going to create some, actually some, um, some, bracelets tonight to put in the retail area at the source which is really fun a stone bracelet but yeah it's just um it's really it's 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 really special the energy of my business now that's one of the best compliments we get is our my employees and the energy and that's like a hard thing to like force yeah i have to ask you because obviously with the pandemic restaurants were hit really hard and i i, I know you had a parklet outside is the parklet closed like manhattan beach or does hermos still still have them so the park, it, it's still open. 
It That's does. I, I'm not sure if they decided to end it at the end of summer. So we're all kind of hanging on and waiting and see what's going on. They definitely are charging us more to have it. So that's been a journey. It's definitely really helped with business. No doubt. Because, I mean, if I wouldn't have gotten all of the grant money and loan money from the government, I mean, my both my business source would have closed for sure. I, mean, I was going to ask you, what did, what did, uh, what did uh, COVID look like to you? And what, what is something positive that you took away from COVID? Cause I, I, I will say that I did come away from COVID not only grateful, but like, I've never had that much time off ever. Like, you know, it was a horrible time, but I, I will say that I will take away the gratitude of, of being given the gift of time. Yeah. So I did not have that. Like a lot of people, because I still had business. So we opened up a restaurant and I was creating and building a restaurant when right before COVID hit Manhattan and, oh. was, and then in Manhattan and opened it up three years ago, right when COVID hit, we opened like in the middle of investor dinners. It was so insane. Wow. For the first almost year of Manhattan and it, I couldn't have customers in my, in my storefront. So I've, and I also had a commissary kitchen in Torrance. So I'm running three businesses in, in the middle of COVID closed men, closed Hermosa for three weeks. We're still paying the employees. I mean, what, that part of my life in COVID, I, I always actually was envious because I was like, everyone else is like getting all this time. And it's uh -huh. like so stressful, like trying to keep three businesses afloat. And so luckily the government pulled through. I actually closed my Manhattan restaurant last November. It was a really big life lesson and everything happens for a reason. And we did the best we could. It was really hard after three years, closed my commissary kept a kitchen a couple of months ago. And now I'm getting back to basics and grassroots and really scaling down so we can scale up again. It feels really good. And the gratitude I came out of from, from COVID was a pre like the amount of connection and bonding that my team, my team and I had was like so special. Like they held on so hard. I mean, people, employees were dropping left and right. And my core people like held on and mm. I would go buy diapers for some of my employees and like, package up rice for their families. And like, just, we were just and providing toilet paper for people that were stressed with money. It was just like, that part of it was just like building like some community, more community too, with my customers. And what I did feel grateful is I closed the source for like two and a half weeks. People lost their mind. I was getting emails and Instagram messages <laughs> and texts, please. I will, literally, I was getting messages, Michelle, I will come to your home. If I can just buy some of the food out of your like literally back door, it's like, I don't have, I can't do this. They're like, you don't understand. We can't go with, so just, just, I already have always been appreciative for my customers and community, but just like it, that part of it brought everyone together tighter. And it like, it would just, I did not take, it just helped me not really like take anything for granted. Like, yeah. So. Yeah, it was a, it was a, I, I talked to retailers all the time. I stopped talking about it because it got to be like, fuck, I don't want to talk about COVID I don't want to talk about anymore. anymore. And like, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. It is interesting though, to see for some people that I haven't talked to and I didn't, I didn't <laughs> have a chance to see how, like what, what people did and how people pivoted the pivoted part for me, the retail end of it is it, it changed the scope of retail and like it one handedly very quickly, the universe literally shuttled out retailers that were not willing to change that weren't going live that weren't doing yeah. stories that it literally and now all these on the retail side of it all these new retailer these young kids and changing the way they're doing things changing the way retail looks now and it's like that part of it's kind of amazing to watch now so I've started yeah. to ask again just because it's like I'm watching like like we had um a couple last week or the week before um that opened a business in Joshua tree and they have got three businesses. One's like an Airstream tra trailer that's at Joshua tree trading post and how they do business and is totally different footprint than like how most of us have seen as far as like, almost like a, not a collaboration, but almost like a collective, but they curate the whole thing versus like an antique shop where there's like 18 different vendors in it. But I, I think a lot of what COVID did do is kind of change the scope of how a lot, at least on the retail level, like how it has changed. Um, talk to me about your cookbook because I'm dying to get it. Okay, great. So sexy, nourishing food to fuel your mind, body, and soul. It came out last Christmas. It was a three and a half year project that also got delayed with COVID. And sexy is one of my favorite words to describe food because I wanted to take back um, 
and change the stigma around the word healthy because healthy people sometimes get in their head, oh my God, it's going to be bland or boring, or I'm going to feel deprived and it's broccoli and chicken and rice and tofu. Right. And so I wanted to, my chef used to say, oh, what a beautiful, sexy tomato. Or So it's my favorite word to describe food. I feel like when we feel really amazing in our body and we're feeling our body with great food and confidence, like feeling sexy feels really good. So sexy, nourishing food feels amazing. Um, sexy is the new healthy. Like it feels like healthy is the new sexy. Yeah. Like makes me feel so good. And the book is 90% plant-based because I chose that because we're also fiber deficient. And also I wanted to showcase and show how beautiful plants are and that it's easy to create a beautiful dish without feeling intimidated or thinking it's going to be boring. And there is a section at the back that's called bison eggs and fish. Cause that's what I eat for my protein. And I've got elixirs and smoothies and smoothie bowls and a whole section at the back of a glossary of adaptogens and what terms mean. And so Ooh, I need yeah. to do this. Yeah. So it's really nice. It's kind of all, and it's, um, yeah, it's really, it's, a, that's about probably 30% of the recipes from the source and the rest is how I eat. Where can people find this book? People can find that on chef. I'm um, on Amazon. Actually, you can go to Amazon for sure. And through chefamber.com, there's a link in my bio through that. You'll take you to book baby. Are you selling it at the restaurant? I am. I have books at the restaurant also. Okay. I need to get one. Yeah. I, I'm definitely, yeah. um, yeah. please tell, well, before I do that, I have two questions that I ask everybody at the end okay. of the interview. All of us are creative. You obviously yeah. are very creative. Where do you find your inspiration? Ooh, where do I find my inspiration? I find my inspiration probably from other chefs that I look up, up to and yeah, from other chefs for sure, or mentors in the industry. And I'll find inspiration by if I know that I can't eat a certain thing and I don't want to feel deprived, then I feel inspired to create something like take an original dish and create something totally wild from it. So I get really inspired from that too. Your chocolate chip cookies. I will tell you that mix that you sell for anybody that do you ship by the way? We do chef. Yes. So if anybody, for those of you listening to this, that are interested in the cookbook, I highly suggest ordering the cookie mix because it is, there is something about this because it is made with coconut oil and there's something about yes. it. There's this dense, yummy, but it's also light. It's yeah. so good. So for those of you listening, I, I'm seriously, you need to go <laughs> both of these things because they're amazing. And then the last thing is what piece of advice would you give somebody that is in a position where they're feeling burned out? They're not loving themselves. They, you know, th like they're going through what we've gone through. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're going through burnout and you can't find that balance for yourself, I always try to start with some sort of mindfulness practice. And I know if somebody's listening, they're like, I don't have time for meditation and I have kids and I've got this business and all the things you've got to reset and balance your nervous system. So there's a couple things I would say, if you can just take five minutes in the morning and lock yourself in the bathroom and pretend you're on the toilet or in the shower, it doesn't even have to be something fancy. Maybe it's in your car. I always start with closing my eyes and just breathe, taking like some deep breaths in and out and really focusing what you want for the day of how you want to feel. Like I pretend my day's already happened and I want to feel grounded. And then can you start with a little gratitude list? Like that's a really good mindfulness practice. If you can get your feet in mother earth at some point during the day, like during a really, really busy day, like if you're super slammed, I don't care if you're at the Bristol farms and you're doing a thing. I know that happens at night. I'm just using this example. And there's like a grassy little part, go out <laughs> there, literally go out. I'll there. be out in the parking lot, right? Take your shoes off for five minutes and just put your feet in mother earth. If you live by the beach or wherever you are, and it doesn't matter if it's cold. Like it's the first thing I do when I get off the plane to ground myself. I just did it mm. before. I just did an Instagram story saying I'm sitting out inside of the sun with my dog. My feet are in the ground because I'm about to be on a podcast. It's the best way to get grounded and centered. If you are at a level 10 stress, putting your feet in mother earth and taking five minutes for yourself before you're on your phone, checking emails, checking Instagram. If you can just give yourself your first hour in the day, if you wake up at four or five, 6 a.m., whatever it is, kids are no kids, has best. Tech, no technology for an hour. Even if you don't five, five minutes for a quick meditation or gratitude, like no technology, it will, I'm telling you, do it for a week. You will feel so different. That vibration of not soaking up all those people's energy immediately when you wake up 
you will feel like a different person. It will help with your overall stress, your balance throughout the day, the vibration of the day that you set for yourself. But yeah, that was more than one, but yeah. No, There's, that is amazing. Quick. Those Chef, are quick and they're free. Yeah. <laughs> Chef, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to ask you to hang on after we, okay. we shut, but thank you so much for your time. I love this conversation. And I, I think it's a conversation that we need to have as stressful entrepreneurs that are out there doing everything. I feel like we need to take care of ourselves and show ourselves yeah. more self-love and it's with food is the perfect way to do it. Well, it was a great conversation. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. you know, bye everyone.